I'd like to bring in now John Bolton, the former national security advisor, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Ambassador, good to have you with us today. Glad to be with you. So Hunter Biden and the Democrats will spin this as, you know, nothing to see here, as you know. But clearly the uh, Republicans and others who are looking at some of the financial uh, dealings say there is a lot to look at here. Do you think Hunter will be forthcoming at all? Do you expect him just to plead the fifth? And what do you make of some of his comments where he's trying to bring in his sobriety and that he is in the fight for the future of democracy? Well, I think that this has become so political, it's hard, it's hard to know how we're ever going to get to the, to, the, to the actual evidence. But if you go back to the 2020 election, Joe Biden said during that campaign he had no connection with his son's business and never talked to his son about his business which was inherently uh, not credible from the beginning. Of course, you talk to your children about their businesses. Uh, and I think what uh, other witnesses have said about the, the brand and Biden and the name, uh, I don't know why many companies around the world would have uh, sought access to Hunter Biden for his, uh, his skills, particularly when he was obviously going through a lot of personal difficulties, as, as, he, as he reminds us now continually. They, they wanted access to his father. They wanted access to the name. Uh, and the question is whether whether there's sufficient evidence that can really show that that uh, that that's what was at play. And uh, I don't I don't know how this deposition is going to go today. I'm certainly looking forward to reading the transcript. Yes. And we saw just a few moments ago before we came live on the air that President Joe Biden was at Walter Reed in Bethesda, Maryland, for an unannounced physical. They talked it would happen. They timed it for today, maybe to take some of the news cycle and the focus away from Hunter. Uh, there's no cognitive part of this physical. Ambassador, do you have concerns about President Joe Biden's mental competency? Yeah, look, uh, I've known uh, President Biden for many, many years, and uh, uh, I, I think the, uh, the the effects of aging are, are clear. Uh, it happens to everybody. There's no disgrace in it. Uh, but I can tell you this from long experience in, in government, that in any administration, the most important asset they have is the time and attention of the president. Uh, and it's limited, just like all of it is. But if you have a president who's not on duty 24-7, you have an administration that's potentially in trouble. And, uh, you know, I think the, the, the Democrats are undertaking a very risky political strategy here. It means literally whistling past the graveyard. Uh, and I think it puts the country in jeopardy. Well, and it's not just our, our border. We know he's going to be there this week uh, to talk about uh, immigration when uh, there's a lot of concerns about the 7.3 million who have entered our southern border. But, sir, also uh, concerns about all the conflicts overseas. I'd like to get your take on the Jerusalem Times report saying that that they are planning, Iran, another October 7th style attack. Of course, that would be during Ramadan, the holiest month of the Muslim calendar. Do you think they would actually be successful in undertaking something like this? Well, I think it's important that, that, that we take a look at this. The reporter from the Jerusalem Post, Jonah Jeremy Bob, is a very reliable a source he he knows Iran well, uh, and and it's it, uh, entirely consistent with the way the mullahs in Tehran operate to to take advantage of of what one might consider a time when they would actually be practicing their religion uh, to try and conduct another sneak attack. And one thing the Biden administration has utterly failed to do. I mean, they rejected in their. Uh, their stenographers in the in the mass media just pick it up is to say Iran is not behind all of these. Uh, terrorist attacks, not behind Hamas, not directing Hamas, not directing the Houthis in Yemen, not directing Hezbollah in Lebanon, not directing the Shia militia in Iraq and Syria. Of course they are. This, this is one uh, campaign part of the Iran ring of fire strategy. That's their term. Uh, I, I don't I can't predict every next step Iran's going to take, but to take advantage of uh, the holy month of Ramadan would be entirely in character for them. Well, uh, we have Joe Biden, though, talking about a ceasefire. Uh, and Netanyahu says, no, that's actually not so fast here. Um, what do you make of the sort of the disconnect that continues on between Biden, this particular administration, and Netanyahu and Israel, our biggest ally? Yeah, well, you know, ironically, both Israel and Hamas, probably the only thing they agree on is that Biden was wrong on how close they are in these negotiations. I, I think Biden is motivated 
largely by political concerns. I think people have seen the results of the Michigan presidential primary yesterday were uncommitted on the Democratic side, got over 100,000 votes. Uh, they're very worried about the left wing of the Democratic Party, which uh, has shifted their entire party from, from largely a pro-Israel party to a pro-Palestinian party. So I think Biden wants a ceasefire because he wants to take this off the table and ease his own the split within within the Democratic Party. I think it would to do that would deny Israel really its legitimate right of self-defense. I, I don't know how these negotiations will turn out, but I think Israel uh, has a right to continue doing what it's doing. And uh, if they don't eliminate Hamas, we're, we're all going to pay the price for them. What about, let's talk about Ukraine, and we know the Big Four meeting yesterday did not produce any conclusive next moves when it comes to funding there. We know that uh, Putin, we've talked about this uh, after the murder, the reports of him, you know, behind the murder of Alexei Navalny. There's a funeral, of course, uh, for him now on Friday. The lawyer was arrested. Uh, Putin seems to be making big moves on the battleground as well. Uh, where do you see this? There was also concerns after Macron had mentioned putting troops there, NATO troops on the ground. And yet still here we are with really no conclusive uh, decision here in Congress with if there will be any more funding. And if there is, where's the accountability of how the money is being allocated, Ambassador? Well, I think uh, this is this is all very positive for Putin and, and the Russians. Uh, I mean, I really think it's time for Congress to to uh, to vote on this aid to Ukraine and to get it through. And in terms of accountability, it's certainly a legitimate question. The accountability for most of it is that we're not shipping boxes full of dollars. We're shipping boxes full of ammunition that are being expended on the battlefield uh, and where there are cash transfers, which has been long been a part of how America delivers foreign assistance. Uh, there, there are government, the uh, executive branch and congressional ways to monitor it. Stopping Russia from being successful in its unprovoked aggression against Ukraine, it's not an act of charity by the United States. It's in our core national interest uh, to have peace and stability in Europe. So this is something that uh, notwithstanding the Biden administration's wretched policy on the Mexican border, we need to support the Ukrainians who are doing our work for us in, in helping to decimate the Russian army. Ambassador John Bolton, good to have you in, sir. Thanks for your time today. Glad to be with you.